Welcome back to my channel folks. Today we're going to tear down the Nintendo GameCube, which is a, a nice console from 2001-2002. At that time it competed against the Xbox and the PlayStation 2. 22 million consoles were sold in the meantime and it's a 32-bit uh, console. Well, as maybe you remember, it's the successor of the Nintendo 64 and it's the predecessor of the Wii. All right, let's tear down this little boy. And as you can imagine, I'm interested in the CPU and what's inside and also the graphic processing unit. All right, so let's start. So in order to tear this down, you will need a, a special uh, Nintendo screwdriver. I have purchased it uh, alongside a kit, which is a, the, the Nintendo um, screwdriver kit. It comes with a lot of special screwdrivers, uh, small, big, um, all kinds of shapes. So let's not go into this detail here. Uh, then that is to tell you it will be quite difficult for you to tear this down, to open it if you don't have the appropriate uh, screwdrivers. Okay, I was not successful here yet, let's, let's try again. It's quite easy if you have the right screwdriver. The right adapter. Okay, so hope this opens now. Still not. Okay, I'm showing here. Let's open this up here again. All right, four screws. Good, let's lift it. Yeah, so here you have the outside part. You see the CD uh, drive. Oh my God, it's also quite, quite uh, full of dust. Well, we don't need that part. This is the front side. Uh, let's remove the back side. Yeah, now we have to remove the fan. A lot of screws, as you see, so it's quite boring. I will, I will wind forward fast because there's nothing spectacular here. there to remove the the wrong part I think that's clear. yes here we go so nothing special about the drive yeah, if you need to further repair a drive you know there are more screws to to unlock Okay, so we are now getting close to the center of the whole thing. Um, yeah, more screws. Let's do it. I think uh, most of them are done, so I could even remove this part. I'm not so sure. Yeah, let's maybe unscrew it first. There's a large heat sink, as you see, very large heat sink. Cooling probably the, the GPU and the, the central processor. Yeah. 
All right, so all screws are removed. Now I can lift this up. And uh, what you see here is the backside of the motherboard. Quite compact again. See some connectors and the huge, huge heatsink. So the challenge will be to remove the heatsink and then see what's below. What remains is, yeah, is the bottom part and also um, the, the power supply part. So let's put that away and then see if we can somehow remove this one. So my first guess would be that I need a screwdriver and simply, you know, look here how to, Oh yes, that worked very well. The screwdriver and off is the heatsink. Heatsink with a lot of paste to transfer the heat, which is quite usual. So let's have a look at what we can see already there are a couple of ICs there's a processor here there's a processor there I guess these are the memory chips let me just first remove this part here so we can see if this is the GPU or this is the CPU okay let's have a look what is below the paste that is used to transfer the heat from the, the processor, the CPU and GPU to the heatsink. And I think what you can now pretty well see is the big part here is the ATI GPU and below you have the the IBM PowerPC 32-bit CPU of the console. Well, the, the IBM Gecko processor, which you see here, um, has a 2 times 32 kilobytes first level cache, has a 256 kilobyte second level cache, and it was produced in 180 nanometer feature size. And the micro architecture is the PowerPC generation three. It's a one core. The whole thing is called PowerPC 750 XE or the Gecko, nice name. And it has some similarities to the NEC VR4300, which was the predecessor, so there's some history also there. Good, if we look at the, the ATI, the ATI is called the Flipper. It says here the Flipper, I don't know if you can see that correctly. You see also it's produced by NEC. And yeah, the question now will be how to get them off this motherboard. Yeah, so that's going to be the next challenge. Uh, so stay tuned. I'm going to do that uh, with a heat gun. We are going to remove the CPU, which is the IBM Gecko and the GPU and maybe also these uh, parts, the memory and, and another IC from the GameCube mo motherboard. So in order to do that, we are going to use a heat gun. I will start the heat gun and go to 650 degrees and let it stand there. Heat up the devices from the bottom and then if I'm lucky, it just takes a couple of minutes and then the whole thing can, can be removed.
and that's it. I let it cool down. Twist this off. And now we have already the first result. All right, so let's summarize. We have here the motherboard of the GameCube. What you see here below is the CPU, CPU of IBM. It's a RISC processor based on the PowerPC 750, codenamed Gecko. It runs at 485 megahertz. Is a basically a 64-bit architecture, but uh, in this uh, version it is using only 32 uh, bits. For 64 kilobyte first level cache and 256 second level cache. Let's go to the GPU, to the graphic processing unit. It's an ATI, which is produced by NEC, codenamed Flipper. It has 51 million transistors. And then we have here the memory modules. Okay, that's it. I will try to reassemble now the GameCube.